wow. You know, my favorite thing as being a part of a community of faith is watching other people use their gifts to bless others. And today was one of those moments in time where we got to watch a worship team uh, lead us in worship and just create an atmosphere of love and wonder. And so thank you to all the ladies that were up there. It was ladies special today. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It was just a lot of ladies. And Wade, don't forget Wade. Thank you, Wade. Uh, but throughout this day, the, one of the hopes that we always have on Sundays and the prayers that lead me throughout the week is that God would show up and meet people right where they are, however that means, because we don't know where all of you are in the story of life and faith. And we always trust that the Spirit will work in ways that we don't understand and most times don't even know about. And today, wherever you are in your journey of life, I hope you know that this is a safe place to just be. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to beat up on you. We're just going to celebrate that God is with us and to celebrate being together as a community. And immediately afterward, we're going to fill our bellies full of chili. Uh, some are excited. Others are like, I don't know. We are working through this month on a premise that if Jesus was alive today, Jesus would be a surfer. And the reason is, is because whenever Jesus went about teaching, he used the common things of his day and age to teach deeper spiritual truths. For example, if you're a fisherman, he talked about going and fishing for people. If you were a farmer, he talked about scattering seeds and harvest. That Jesus used the common things among them to teach much deeper truths. And if Jesus was in Hawaii today, I think he would be a surfer. Amen? Amen. And he'd probably be really good. Because he could walk on water, which means he never falls in, right? <laughs> Not fair, Jesus. But today, as we uh, continue in the series, the first week we looked at what does it mean to be part of a community? The lesson from surfing is never go alone. And that's true in life as well. We aren't called to go alone in this life, but instead as a community in Ohana together in this life. And last week, we began to explore what does it mean to be a people of discernment? How do we read the swell that's in front of us and discern what God would have us to do in the midst of the myriad of decisions that we make every day? And so today we turn to the third topic from the surf, and I invite you to pray with me as we invite the Spirit to continue to be at work in us and grant us hearing for these scriptures today. Let us pray. God, we thank you because you come to us in the common places of life. Thank you that you can take the commonness and make it something much richer and truer. Today, would you stir us afresh, teach us your ways, soften our hearts, and open our minds. For the name of Christ our Lord that we pray. Amen. So in the surfing world, there's an etiquette to surfing. There are certain faux pas that you never want to do. And when I first started surfing, I didn't know what those were because no one told me. Until one day, I saw a guy way down the line paddling for a wave. And I thought, he's way down there. I'm just going to catch this wave as well. And as I caught the wave, suddenly he was right next to me, screaming words that I can't repeat in church <laughs> about dropping in on him. And I didn't know what dropping in meant because, again, I was new. And I realized pretty quickly that I did something wrong. I just didn't know what, and they clearly didn't like me in that moment in time. Not too uh, soon later, I, I was out one day, and it was quite large, and, and this wave was coming, and the guy that I was uh, sitting next to started paddling for the wave, and suddenly we see another person drop in on him, and he screams as loud as he can, sharing is caring. <laughs> and I thought, when I got yelled at, they didn't say sharing is caring. <laughs> they used lots of words that aren't appropriate for this audience. And I thought, what a weird statement. Sharing is caring? As you get dropped in on? As he fell in the water and then paddled back out, I said to him, what is this sharing is caring? He said, years ago, I, I came to the conclusion that people are going to drop in on you and people are going to be rude. And I'm out here to enjoy myself and be at peace. And I had to change the way I responded. And so I said to people all the time, sharing is caring. And that's the way that he would approach surfing, is that there's plenty of waves for all of us, and so let's share. And by sharing these waves, we care for each other. So every time a wave set would come through, he would say sharing is caring, and eventually everyone would let him go, and he would get his wave. 
And the community began to use this phraseology of sharing is caring. His son began to surf with him, a college kid. And another time I was out surfing, I saw the son. And guess what the son was saying to everybody? Sharing is caring. And it became this phrase that made so much sense. Sharing is caring. There's plenty of waves in the ocean for all of us. And being gracious and sharing the waves with each other is an act of love and grace and respect to one another. You see, the sharing is caring isn't a new phrase, is it? When you were raising your kids, how many of you ever said sharing is caring? Especially when the siblings start fighting about that's mine and no, it's mine. And you say sharing is important. And let me teach you the lesson of sharing. As they grow up, our hope and dream is that we raise our kids in such a way that they go up, grow up and be a generous adults that bless the world with their presence and they share from their heart, soul, and, and their resources to bless our world. And yet, we also know that sharing is caring is something that we need to implement in our own lives, throughout our lives. And so just like waiting for some waves to come through, We wait for the Spirit of God to work within us and through us, and most notably by saying sharing is caring. Our scriptures talk a lot about this, and the reality of the country that we live within, the USA, Giving USA shared uh, the information of last year's 2018 uh, generosity of what Americans have done in the last year. 2018, Americans gave $427 billion to charity. $427 billion with a B dollars to charity. We as a culture believe in charity. Broken down, what that comes out to is that individuals provided two-thirds of all charitable gifts, and the other third came from corporations and foundations. Individual giving in 2018 actually fell by individual accounts by 3.4% on average, whereas for churches, churches last year experienced a 4% drop in giving across the national board. And on average, Americans, they surmise, give away about 1.9% of their disposable income. 1.9% of disposable income is given away. What creates such a generous culture that we live in? Many cultures in the world may not practice generosity in the capacity that we do. Why do we believe in charitable giving as such an important part of our ethos as a country? Well, I don't know the answers to that because I'm not a sociologist, but I can tell you about what it means for us within the church. Within the church, we believe in sharing because sharing is very good. We believe that our scriptures teach us over and over again, actually 2,300 times, it speaks to how we view money, resource, and possessions. 2,300 times the second most talked about topic in scripture. Now, maybe you're like me that often had believed, you know, at church, I don't really want to hear about money. You know, I come to church to be inspired, to, to find out what God's doing. I really don't like it when the pastor stands up and does the Sermon on the Amount, right? Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Amount. Yeah, I, it's been a long day, I'm sorry. But what has always struck me about if you read the scriptures closely, It's not about that we want more of your money. It's actually an issue of the soul. That possessions and money and things can crowd out the space of God, and we can live in a culture of of not enough, of scarcity. And that we can always look upwards of those above us in the social ladder and say, see, we still don't have enough because look at them. And very seldom do we ever look backwards and say, wow, We are so fortunate. You see, Jesus understood this really well. Did you know that his favorite topic, preaching and teaching, was about possessions and money? In the scriptures, what we discover is that much of these scriptures, what he's teaching about, 11 out of the 39 parables, he talks about possessions or money. He continually is inviting people into looking inside of themselves and asking deeper questions. How much is enough? 
Does this stuff possess you or do you possess it? Are you willing to share so that no one ever has need among us? And so we have passages of Scripture in which he says things like, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Much will be demanded from anyone who has been given much. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, even more will be asked of you. In the Sermon on the Mount, he said, When they wish to haul you to the court and take your shirt, let them have your coat too. When they ask you to go one mile, go a second mile. Give to those who ask and don't refuse to share with each other. Jesus constantly is inviting us to look at our stuff and ask deeper and truer questions. And he sends out the disciples two by two to go and heal and and do the miracles of God. And guess what he tells to take with them? Nothing. They were trusting that others would be gracious and kind and supplying their needs. The earliest images of the church in the book of Acts is a church that's gathered together to do life in the midst of the struggle of being a community. And the beautiful language of that first uh, image of the church is that everyone had everything in common and they shared what they owned so that nobody ever had need. They were generous. And their generosity, not only with what was in their pockets, but their hearts and their lives, built this beautiful thing called the church, the way of Christ in the world. And the community, even though there was great persecution, the church kept growing because they kept loving and caring for each other in a way that no one had ever seen before. I wonder, for a topic that's so talked about in our scriptures, why do we not want to talk about it? Well, if we're honest, that's my stuff that you're talking about. You know, I can have a list of all the bad things out there, of the people and what they do, but, but I don't know if I want to talk about me and my stuff. Do, do I possess my things or do they possess me? Am I willing to share that which I have, not just resource, but my heart and my life with another, to bless them? Because this is the real stuff of life. There are people deeply in need all the time. And while we do much good in this world, we can do much more together. Because we have this deep-rooted belief that when we take that which we have and share it, there's always an abundance. And we're able to meet the needs of everyone among us. And not just among us, but beyond us. Back when I was interviewing here at the church, they gave me this blue book that's about this day big. And it's the history of Central Union Church from 1887 to 1988. I read the book, and it was inspiring beyond belief. Why? Because this congregation, through its history, has understood the gift of sharing and the way that it cares for its greater community, not just this campus, but the world outside of this campus. It was a way to look beyond ourselves and say, what are the great needs of our day and age, and how do we dare to step up to meet those needs? And story after story of churches starting and movements starting and nonprofits starting was a story of a community that believed that sharing is caring. And enacting it allowed us to be the people of God that shined a giant spire in our community. And the good news is I don't think this is over. I think we have everything that we need as a community of faith right now. I believe that we have all the people that we need right now and all the resources that we need. What we need is everyone participating and sharing is caring. And for each of us, that means something different. And we discern what God's calling us to. And we sometimes do things like stand up on stage with a microphone in front of us, shaking. I'm not sure if anyone's shaking today because we're going to sing. Or, or, or today, Peely's been running around asking people to read scripture the number one fear of humanity is public speaking. And she's going and saying, can you help jump over your fear and read our scriptures for us? And what she keeps saying to me is, people keep saying yes. And it's wonderful. And it's good. And the reality for us is that we're going to continue to be the people of God for our day and our age. We have to continue to ask these deeper questions that the scriptures invite us into is what do we do with all of our stuff? Are we trying to hoard it for ourselves? Or are we willing to follow the biblical call to share it so that no one would ever have need 
among us. Sometimes people say to me, well, what does that actually mean? I don't know what that means. If the national average is 1.9% of my income, is that appropriate? I think it's an issue with you and God. And I really think that the more mature you get, you quit asking those questions and you just start being generous. It's a natural outgrowth of spiritual depth. I've never met deep Christians that are hoarders. What I discover is that the deeper they go throughout history, the less they own because they want to give everything away. Because they realize that the ownership clouds us from finding what's really important in this life. So how do we as a community live out being generous in the way that God is generous with us? Well, it's something for you to pray about, to discern, to listen to the still small voice. And if you need some help, the biblical language of the Old Testament was quite simple, that we were supposed to give a tenth of whatever we had. Some of you may go, what? A tenth? That was the language of our scriptures, is that we give a tenth away so that others that don't have the opportunity to take care of themselves have the ability to. Maybe you're 0%, and a huge jump is to 1%. And so you jump to 1% and say, I'm going to help partner and give away something in order to bless this world and continue the mission of God. If you're 1%, maybe you jump to 2 You get the idea, right? And what you'll find is that you will never miss that which you've given away. You'll never sense that, oh, I'm really lacking in this life. What you'll discover is a fullness of life, a freedom from your stuff, an opportunity to bless those around you. You see, out surfing, I learned a valuable phrase. Sharing is caring. It's not just a phrase for surfing. It's a phrase for humanity. It's a phrase for us. And so my hope and my prayer is that you will take time today to pray, to discern, to listen to the still, small voice of God inside of you and ask the deeper questions, am I hoarding my stuff? Is my stuff owning me? Or am I being generous of heart, mind, body, and soul with others and giving myself away, just as Jesus our Christ has shown us? May it be so among us. Amen.